Welcome back. It's Mason and Remy. Uh, once again, here uh, we'll be answering uh, some questions that we've received on different videos. Please keep them coming. Really love to see everybody who has reached out and had questions about us. We'll talk about life. Some of our things that we are passionate about in this episode, plus um, kind of a colleague asked us about how we go about a lot of what we did do. And I feel like we could spend a whole episode on this when it comes to Mason and Remy's creative process or you know some of uh, how we came up with some of the things that we did and how we executed it. We'll be talking about that in this episode. And before we're done, um, kind of a big announcement. I mean, it's something that I think is, uh, is good news. Good news, good stuff. So we'll yeah. get to that coming up first. Uh, hey, how's it going, Remy? It's going, it's going well. Uh, chocolate sales are, are up, which is good. Good to know. Um, <laughs> good to know. I, I, I definitely would buy some chocolate from you if I if if you're if you want me to. I will. I can All help right, you we'll out. Be there this weekend. How, I, I, I hear you saying that. I don't, I don't want you to commit. I don't have to. I, I don't want to take you from any family stuff. But yeah, man. I mean, not a whole box. But yeah, we'll take some chocolate. We got we got Halloween coming up, and I would feel better handing out your kids' bars than I would paying $9 for two bags of one Kit Kat. Bro, I'm so mad at Halloween candy this year. Yeah, yeah. We were uh, stocking up. I remember last year. This is our first year owning a home. Last, last October, it's our first Halloween in our new house. We've got little skeleton dog by the front door. You know what I mean? Like we're decorating for the first time. We've always lived in a condo or an apartment. Don't put any nails in anything. So this, we're really excited about it. We bought so much candy. Not a lot of kids came. It's good in the neighborhood. I think we're just, yeah, I just don't think we're in the big candy bar neighborhood. Like I maybe uh, thought we were. Um, it's interesting but, because I feel like you're, you're in a, you're in kind of a neighborhood -y spot where maybe there's just not a whole lot of kids. I don't yeah, know. I, I think the kids from my neighborhood were like, let's get on over to those uh, gated communities. Cause mm. where we are, there are, there, we're in, I'm in normal Illinois, you know, home of state farm insurance country insurance, Illinois State University. There's some money here. Let's go on over to those neighborhoods. That might not be my neighborhood. I live in a nice neighborhood, but I'm yeah. going to change that this year. I'm going to turn my neighborhood into a big candy bar neighborhood. <laughs> I'm going to force my neighbors to get on board with that. We're going to get the traffic in there. I, I, heed my word, everybody, come on through to my house. I will not be sharing my address. But if you can find it, come on through. we got big <laughs> candy bars. Some of them might be Remy's daughter's candy bars and, or, and, or son's candy bar. Not only are you helping to create a community moment in my community, but we are supporting the kids of, of Columbia. Is it, I, I, you know, wherever yeah. the kids, I don't want to say where his kids go to school. That's weird. So listen, come through, get some big candy bars this Halloween. Uh, I'm serious. If you got some candy bars this week and I'll buy some, we'll talk about it off the air. Okay. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll support, support we'll the just, family. We'll park down the street and we'll send the kids up to your door. So answer your door. If okay, that would be adorable. I will let you know our doorbell doesn't work. Tell them to knock. We don't have a sign posted about it, so all the people that come by and just ding, 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 and we don't answer. Okay. <laughs> we'll tell them to yell. That's a pro tip, by the way. If you don't want people to come to your door, just unhook your doorbell. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm, to the, I'm to the point now where, so a box of candy bars is $60. Ooh. And I'm to the point now where I'm just, I'm wanting to get rid of them at like $40 a box. <laughs> it's cutting and then, deals. And then <laughs> Like just pay the forty or eighty dollars or whatever it is, you know, at the end of the day to get them to four boxes a piece, so that they can go to uh, Sky Zone or whatever trampoline park. Oh hell yeah, to. it's but Sky instead, Zone. Yeah, instead Worth of five hundred and whatever dollars it is for eight boxes of candy, now it's only like sixty to eighty dollars out of well, our I'm, pocket. Eating that twenty dollars is cheaper than actually taking your kids to Sky Zone. True. So that is a smart. That is a smart business play. Yeah. That or like you said, the Halloween angle where it's like, well, and I could also sell you this whole box for forty dollars, and you'd have full size candy bars for your trick or treaters. You wouldn't have to go, you know, spend however much money on Reese's peanut butter cups because you're right, a bag of that is ridiculously priced. I mean, even more so with inflation and all the things, you know, it's hard <laughs> to go to the grocery store these days. Um, but yeah, the, I feel like I feel like the chocolate prices have have steadily gone up over the past five years like you can't go to the you can't go to the store and get a five dollar bag of reese's pieces or reese's peanut butter cups anymore no they're like 10 15 sometimes for bags of candy it's crazy 
not anywhere here in the fall because they know who we are and they know that we are getting 20% for the kids, 80% for us. Yeah. Like it's it's September as we record this. And I'm like, candy prices. It's not even October. (laughs) (laughs) They know what they're doing for sure. (laughs) I was buying them early last year to avoid it. Like my wife and I bought our Christmas tree in in the fall last year. We got it $100 off. We went back to the same store as Christmas approached. Our same tree was a hundred more dollars. So I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, all right. Midwinter, I'm buying paver stones. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing all my all my summer buying in the winter. I'm buying like garden stuff right now because they're like, nobody's coming to the garden shop. I'm in this. I'm throwing money everywhere. Yep. I'm trying to get a deal. Um, but it's not happening with, with, with candy this year. I almost said Christmas candy this year. <laughs> I definitely know what holiday is coming up. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, just a, just a, an observation from my side is I started to plan like Halloween's coming up and now it's, it's $9 for two bags of candy, or I can get some big candy bars from the local kid and support the local school. And not only that, but feed the local kids, local, all, all it's, it's a good, I think we're onto something here. See, it feels, it feels better. I it think. does feel better. It does feel better. Uh, not while only- we're, while we're on the subject of candy, just really yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. We had a comment on our last video that said, (laughs) because we talked about candy corn and Uh how it it doesn't matter who it is. They always feel like they've got this eureka moment when they go, you know, if you add peanuts uh, to candy corn, it tastes like a payday. Like a payday. Yeah. That exact same thing happened to a random woman who was listening to the podcast that day. And she's like, no way. And he was so enthusiastic about it when he told me. <laughs> she experienced exactly what we experienced and yeah. what we now see as a an inside joke. It's a, it's a meme to us alone who, who would be on the air year after year and someone would call and go, hey, did you know? Yeah. And we have to go, oh no, tell us. Because <laughs> uh, you know, you don't want to be rude. It's always it's always the conversation that is, are you on board with candy corn or not? Right. <laughs> it's a very polarizing candy. So I think people are like, well, if you want to like it, add peanuts. It'll taste like this payday candy bar. Right. So that's that's kind of the solution in everybody's mind. I think yeah. but I, I love candy, candy corn. I love candy corn pumpkins. Oh, it's like three candy corns in one. <laughs> and I think I'll say what I say every year when you start to talk about how much you love candy corn. So you're the one. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know of anybody who's like standing on business with you on that. But I do know that some people look, I remember eating them. I'll toss it like, like grandma had them in the in the bowl. You know what I mean? It's just like super hard sugar. Let's go. That's what it's about. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's probably why most of my family has had diabetes their whole life. Because candy. Uh, yeah, well, grandma just had it out and I do feel like I've seen it way beyond in October, but that may be a grandma thing. Um, uh, and it didn't stop me from eating it. I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but such is life right around this time of year. Yeah, it's candy corn time. It's it's candy season. So, of course, we're we're going to be chatting about that. But glad to hear that you're still like working towards sending the kids to do some fun stuff. And if anybody can help out. Uh, shoot a comment. Maybe Remy will slip into your DMs and ship you a couple candy bars. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work, but uh, <laughs> I would definitely support if we if we get together. But uh, I know you got family stuff coming. I'm not trying to take away for that. So you can deliver three candy bars to me and the me and the family. Dude, I'll take away from family time to get rid of these candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. All right. Yeah, I, I got some money for you. Uh, okay. So let's get into today. I mean, I like to take a little bit and go, "Hey, how are you?" Because really, Remy and I will will text throughout the week. But this is where we get to chat and see how it's going. And we don't really go, you know, hey, man, how are you? We go like, hey, a video upload. Hey, you know, uh, short uh, timestamps, like all these different things about the project we're on here. But we never take a second to do that. And that was actually something that uh, we got a question about. And this is maybe I'm going to I'm going to start with this question here, too, Um, because we did a bit of a QA, and a right? We we asked people and said, hey, come through and ask a question. Tell us, uh, you know, what you want to know and we'll answer. So the question that we had here was in addition to the q and I'd love to have you each talk about a thing you're passionate or interested, maybe interview the other about something that makes them light up. It doesn't have to be about work or something fancy, just something you enjoy and, sh- and want to share. I-, I liked hearing about your lives when you were on the air. So like a where are they now kind of thing. Uh, and we could have done some better prep, probably brought in the wives and kids and all that stuff. This isn't the wives and kids show. So, <laughs> Mason and Remy. Plus, we'd have to pull them away from doing all the things that let us do this show. Yeah, uh, wife's at work. Keaton's going to college. 
uh, there's a small update from me, um, uh, at least on the on the other folks. Maybe in the future we'll get the family on. Yeah, I'm not against fun. that. But obviously, if the kids are collecting the candy bar money for school, they're doing well. Yeah, yeah, kids are good. Kids are good. Uh, we are entering. So they just did like all the standardized testing at school, and um, did pretty well with that. So we're we're good. excited. I don't know what we've done to contribute to the success that they're having in school right now, but you know it is. It's fourth and second grade. It's pretty easy stuff. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, everything's good. Lauren's good. Um, good. Just uh, rocking and rolling on on getting through fall and getting into all of the uh, chaos that ensues with, you know, Halloween and yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the holidays that are coming up. But this will be my first year not having to deal with uh a job that like takes me away from all of that um i think the the one thing that i well, there's a lot of things that i like about my job now but if i needed to i could just I mean, go away for a week and as long as i'm getting stuff you know posted and content up and all the things then i'm, I'm okay to do that and there's nothing that ties me to this spot right now as we speak so I think uh, it's it's it'll be interesting to see how the holidays feel without that burden. We were just talking about how I'm going home this weekend to see my family, and uh, they always have stuff on Sundays in the afternoon. And I'm like, guys, we can't. And now we can. The only thing that's holding us back is the kids. But everything before was always. Well, we got a two and a half hour drive ahead of us. I want to get out of here on Sunday at like noon so that we can be back before dinner so we can settle in and do all the things before I have to wake up at 3 a.m. the next day. And now it's like we don't really need to do that. If it's the summer, we could stay a few extra days. In fact, we uh, we had a little bit of flexibility on our Philadelphia trip over the summer. We uh, we left a day early, um, which was which was kind of nice and and fun to do and have that flexibility um so i don't know i i this is a long a long-winded answer to oh, to good. the question of how's everything going but i'm just kind of like realizing all the freedom that's that's uh happening in my life because i don't have the burden of and the stress of and the anxiety of the radio gig yeah yeah i mean you're so uh your ang your anxiety level goes so high we've talked about it in previous episodes when you take any time off in a business where you are the performer right like they bring in someone else to test to see if they'll do good in your position or you have someone else that's possibly doing a better job than you would. So you're absolutely afraid to take time off. You're absolutely like, uh, and maybe, I don't know if this is just, uh, I've noticed now that I'm working for a company that's international, that this is a purely American thing. Like <laughs> They have no problem taking time off in any other country. As a matter of fact, like I work with people in Spain and it is law. You have to take a week off there before, like each year. I, I remember we got to December and my boss was like, I haven't taken my week off yet. So I have to, I was like, have to, he's like, yeah, literally it's, it's in the laws. Yeah. They have, they're, they are, we have so few actual holidays in America that we have to be given random days off because the rest of the world has a holiday uh, and we don't, but we really lean on our workers in a weird way. I'm not trying to be like, all right, folks, we're going globalist uh, or something along those lines. <laughs> it's but true, having, having been exposed to other, uh, you know, work hierarchies uh, in, in other countries and cultures, it's super different, super amazing. Like I met with folks from India, uh, Brazil, uh, Barcelona, Taiwan, like all over Ireland at this one summit I went to. And, and it was, we sat back for a second. I looked around and was like, we all do the same thing in different countries and it's so vastly different. Um, but this is one of those places where you're afraid or we almost kind of indoctrinate you to think you should be afraid to take time off mm -hmm. where, you know, it's, it's mm, okay. If you want to take time off, I guess, you know, and that it, it scares you. I'm so happy to know that that burden is gone after this for you. And it was for me. Cause like you said, we would be getting up at four or 5 AM the next day. You can't stay out till nine o'clock three hours from home unless you want to do a garbage show the next day mm -hmm. um, or you know if you're on a bunch of drugs then you're fine yeah, yeah. go ahead you won't be fine <laughs> because of the drugs but you know that you know yeah <laughs> cause yeah. and effect yeah that's um, uh, the the energy the energy and the anxiety thing is so uh 
like we, we have a, a guy from England that's on our on our staff and he this morning was just like, hey, I'm going to take a day off today. No questions asked. And I was like, can you just do that? Can you just like take a day off and say you're not going to come to work? And, and then I, you know, brought myself back and I was like, there's there's different culture of taking time off around the world. Mm-hmm. And I think we should be allowed to take that time off and and it should be in there because it's so much it, it's so good for the soul so good for um the psyche the just take yeah. a second take a step back and get rid of all of the day-to-day work stuff and be able to actually let go of that and to not have to check email or not feel like you have to check email or not feel like you have to check in or whatever it is and not be punished for it um, I'm, did I tell the story of my boss wanted to talk to me after yeah. our show last <laughs> and, and he, and I was like, wait, uh, are we doing pay cuts? Are we doing, I don't uh, know if you told it on the air. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't go ahead. So to just in, in summary, my, one of my bosses was like, Hey, after the show, I want to talk just you and I, and I was like, you can't just you can't just like do that. Like, what do you, would you like to talk to me about? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, he's like, I just want to just debrief after the show and just, you know, talk about what went right, what went wrong, that kind of thing, not take off our pants. Um, <laughs> and he goes, radio really did mess you up. Didn't it? Cause I'm questioning, like, I need to know what we're talking about. I need to, I can't, I can't go on my weekend thinking that, I'm getting let go or whatever, because these are all of the intrusive thoughts that come into your mind when somebody like that says something in a normal circumstance after you've been in a mentally uh, jarring occupation for 15 years, right? So you start to do that. But uh, we had the conversation. It was fine. And uh, still employed. Yeah, still employed. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I, like that's, you remember whenever we wanted to take time off, uh, in the radio world, first off, you had to go to your boss and see if it was okay. Like in the radio world, before uh, the jobs that we took in St. Louis, the radio ratings were really, you have different markets. Um, smaller markets are only based on the spring and the fall book. Uh, in larger markets, it's year round that they're rated. So in the smaller markets, they would say no vacation during the spring and fall book. That's just it. That's just the way it is. You cannot, during this ratings period, whether it's three months uh, here and three months there, they would say, you know, have your vacation around the, around the holidays or in the depths of summer where we're not being rated. So that's, that's what it's like in a smaller market, larger market. They might tell you like, I mean, it's your show. It's your ratings at this point. If you want to step away, you know, the show is judged every day and recorded every day. And whoever's in there might have that spike and they can see. All of that, you know, when it comes to who's listening and who's tuning out and when they're tuning out and where they're tuning out. So that's that's pressure. You know what's crazy right now? You, when we wanted the day off, we would go into the little, I don't know if it's like work day or, or whatever the, 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 the tool is that the company is using to you know, pay people. And we'd have a 40 hour block, right, of, of hours that you could take. And then you take eight hours and use them for a day off. My current job, I have unlimited PTO. I could, same as that guy. I could just go, I'm not feeling it today. And my team has my back and they will do whatever it takes. And that's the structure they've set up because it's a professionally organized business with the proper leadership. Yeah. Um, not just, uh, I hate to say it because I've seen it in so many engineering rooms, alligator clips holding wires together is a lot like what it feels like radio is at this point. I, okay. I, I hate <laughs> hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see it for everybody who I know like is a good duct tape. Like they're a strong adhesive and they can really help a station fly, but all the other parts are are not working for them and and it's left up to them and them alone to fear every moment that they're away from the microphone. Um and, and it shouldn't be that way. Uh, but here we are talking about our new jobs and somebody asked here, you know, where are they now in in so much of a better place. I know we hit on it in our first episode in this podcast. Uh, but I know I feel so much better. Uh, just I'm I'm so well rested. Getting up at 4 a.m. for however many years is just like it. You know what it does? Does this? <laughs> um, but and and the gray, uh, and then just so much healthier because of that. Because I'm getting more sleep. I am 
in the best shape I've probably ever been in since high school. When I was in high school, I tried so hard to get under 200 pounds and I couldn't do it. I'm under 200 pounds now. Went and saw my doctor last week. He says I'm good. Nice. I was worried. Uh, but I've also done a lot more. Like my wife and I go for walks now after work. My wife works over at the community college in town as in the IT department. Uh, and, and she'll come home from work. We'll go for a walk. We'll have dinner together. When after 11 years, my wife and I would never even know what that was like. Uh, and now that we're, you know, obviously married and living together, we are like, us, like a normal thing, whatever you want to call that. Uh, <laughs> it, but it's like a bit of a normal life and I couldn't be happier. So as far as an update for me, and, and, and I think, I think Remy would say the same, like, where are we now in so much of a better place? Uh, both mentally and physically. Um, like, I love that you have this space in your basement uh, where we can do this, but you also do so much more there. I know I do the same here because I work from this spot all day and I know you do the same, right? It's kind of like, where where are we now? We're, we're in this spot doing different jobs, but then also coming together to do this. So um, the question was also something uh, about something that makes you light up, something you're passionate about. And I think that might be all that stuff that's around you there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's where you want to go with that question. But if I had to ask you, what's something that you like, something you're passionate about, something that would make Remy light up, what would that be? Topo Chico in the glass bottle. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay. So freaking expensive, but it's so good. And I don't know why. It's a, it's like $2 a bottle, but sometimes I'll, I'll treat myself and I'll get some. Um, but no, I, I don't know if anybody has kind of noticed the progression of the tanks behind me, uh, <laughs> but the, the lighting schedule on the bigger tank, um, this one right here, it's yeah. funny cause it, it starts at the beginning of our podcast and it will be fully lit by the end of it. Um, but this tank back here, I just added rock to, and I know that's not super exciting for most people, but this rock in particular is from the Solomon islands. Which is, yeah, is that the stuff you had imported? Yeah, this is right outside <laughs> of Australia. So this rock was in the ocean about three weeks ago. And what's cool about rock that comes from the ocean is that it comes with all of these like really awesome little tiny ocean critters. Um, so you'll see me as this tank is cycling, getting ready for fish and coral and things like that uh, at night with a flashlight, just like looking at all the tiny little what we call microfauna, all the little copepods and shellfish and everything that came with the rock or survived this transnational, this uh, international shipping from Solomon Islands to Brisbane, Australia, from Brisbane to LA, from LA to Dallas, and from <laughs> Dallas to St. Louis. Um, that's how far this rock has traveled. And it's so cool to see all the life that like makes it that like there's feather dusters and all these little invertebrates that somehow survive that trip. You know, you'd think that that'd be pretty jarring, but, um, as nature's crazy, as Jeff Goldblum's character in Jurassic park says, life will find a way. Right. Um, and I think that's so evident in, in this kind of stuff, but yeah, I'm excited about this new tank that is behind me. Um, we've got some trips coming up. I think I'm, I'm going to Orlando in October uh to one of the coral farms there um and then hopefully denver before the end of the year to go visit our our studio that we have there in the mountains but uh that's that's pretty much my life at this point and uh it, you had mentioned being in good shape i feel like i gained a lot of weight in the first two or three months out of out of employment at okay. least regular radio employment yeah um, and I think that's just, you know, being at home and being around Oreos all day. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the, it's the constant snacking for me. So once, once I, I got back into a routine drinking tons and tons of water, I make it a point no matter what to go to the gym every single day. And we have a little like 24 hour gym here in town. And so I'm there usually between like 10 and 11 every day. Uh, but I make it a habit just to get in there and just do stuff so that I, you know, can, can maintain mental focus and all that kind of stuff. Plus it's a, it, anybody who works out tells you that you, you get mental clarity and, and good ideas come from the endorphin hit that you get while you're Hell in yeah. there. So, um, yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much what I've, what I've been juiced about lately. Um, what about, what about you? 
what, what's you know, going on in your world? It's funny that you mentioned that. First off, I had to, I am so uneducated. I had to look up Topo Chico to see exactly what it was because in my head, I saw the hot sauce bottle. I was, <laughs> I was wrong. That's, that's close. Chumula. It's not that. Yeah, yeah, that's what that is. Right, right, right. Uh, but then you were like in the glass bottle. I was like, I didn't know my man had a, th a taste for the hot sauce like that. That's, that's cool. Um, but now I see that that is not what that is. You had mentioned uh, the mental clarity that comes from the workouts. And this is going to sound weird, but I get that from video games. When I am like totally just in there, my mind is is still running on everything else. I'm finding I need time to think about things. You know what I mean? And, and in our previous life, lives uh in my previous life i probably did a lot of nope now nope now nope now nope now making quick decisions i didn't think about but just had to live with uh and now i i find myself enjoying that moment of like stepping back uh and and going i have to think about this and a lot of times i find myself like blindly in a video game playing and and my mind is working on everything else you know what i mean like yeah i'm doing this hand-eye coordination thing but it's second nature at this point because I usually know the games really well. And my mind is there free to go, oh, what do they mean by that? Or what are they saying? Like, how do, how do I approach this? And that's, that's where I get that mental clarity, um, keeping myself occupied. Because if I'm not, that's where I like, my mind starts to spin out of control and go like down a bad path. So if I can, you know how you see these videos now and like there's something important happening, but then there's also a guy running mine, mine, whatever. Like my mind looks like that, bro. I know <laughs> it's like, what is that? What's wrong with this generation? But that's what my, like, I actually take things in and I'm like, you got to move to the left and the right. And that guy's making a good point, but you got to jump over that thing. Yeah. Um, so, so my mind is like weirdly in a place when I'm playing some games. Uh, so I, I have to go like, I need a minute to go play a game uh, and, and, and just take my mind off of it to let my mind not feel the stress of that. You know what I mean? To, to, to approach it as a secondary, I have, uh, I mentioned before, like we should all take a, this isn't that serious. So let's, let's look at it. I need to do that to take myself like back and go, this isn't that serious. Cause I find myself with just my mind problematic. So I keep my hands busy. I try to, I try to keep myself so invested in work or other projects that I'm doing that. And so in that, I would say like, of course, the thing that make me light up are the things that have kept me a kid for my entire life. Video games are one of them. But I think that uh, in addition to that, it would be this house. I have never owned a home. Remy knows that I've been predominantly just a renter and always was going to be a renter until I died. Because I was, first off, never comfortable in any job I had to say, I'll live here the rest of my life. Um, but then also afraid of home ownership. You know, like it's much easier for me to go, Bring, hello guy, fix a thing. And I don't have to foot the bill, but now I do. And that has been so fun because I am learning. I am much more handy than I ever thought. Brother, I did landscaping out in front of the house. I got a retaining wall. I planted a little tree. Like I am, I am, I'm yard man. My mm -hmm. uncle said to me, Hey, now that you're in your forties, you know what it's like to take care of your lawn. And I, and I circled back to him and was like, how did you know? Like, teach me wise one. I'm in, like, I watered the lawn this morning. I have a friggin' alarm set for that. Like, that's where I go outside and I listen to a Childish Gambino album and my neighbors are probably like, why is this guy always dancing? Like in his yard, just, just watering grass. But I'm like, <laughs> enjoying that. I never knew what that felt like. And creating this space for me has been so enriching. Um, you know that I've probably had secret aspirations of recording music at one point, right? My wife is a musician. We use the closet as a sound booth and I send it to her bandmates. I have a drum set over there. I have, a, um, let me grab them. Let me see if this will work. Wee! So I got like, right? I'm trying to work out. We got the guitars over there. We got the drum that set pink, back. That pink guitar, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. It was a wedding gift for my wife. Yeah, that's my less my less Paul over there. I got a drum set, the, the uke for the wife, but like, and back here is is all of our stuff, you know. And this is kind of where I live. Pay no attention. Oh man, I messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but creating this space uh, for myself has kind of been a okay, uh, kind of been a super cool project for me that has no deadline. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get grass to grow in the front yard. We got landscaping this year. I did two more patches of grass. We're talking about like, what do you want to do back there? Do you want to put a fence up? Because if we put a fence up, like, you know, are we going to have a dog? Are we going to get a dog? Are we do a natural fence. We got to do the, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. 
Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Did it's I time. hear that you may be getting a dog? It's time. Don't give my wife any ideas. She is so wrapped up in every political podcast right now. I don't think she's got time for ours. So I don't want her to hear this. <laughs> but probably. Well, I mean, someday. And we have such a weird, we have a, a our, our, our lot is like pizza shaped, like pizza slice shaped. The, the, the front is like basically our driveway in the mailbox, but then it goes whoosh, like to the back mm -hmm. and we, like our neighbors are, are nice, nice people. No offense. We just don't want them looking in our house every night. We can't open the windows right without looking directly out and seeing our neighbors in their backyard or whatever. So we're talking about putting up a, um, the different arborvitae varieties and how we can make a natural fence. But then the one lady has a really nice backyard and we don't want to cut off. Like she's been growing all kinds of plants her whole life. And we would definitely kill all of her sunlight mm -hmm. if we put that up. So, you know, we're, we're how, doing that. This, this how house. are you thinking about making this fence? <laughs> well, the arborvitaes go to like 10 to 15 feet, you know, depending oh, on the variety. Plants. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah, is that like a pine? pine? Sorry. Yeah. And an arborvitae is uh, like, it's not a pine, but it's not like a traditional tree, right? It's that weird tree that's kind of piney, but like it's more ferny, you know yeah. what I mean? And it goes is, is vertical. It a uh, no, I don't know, you know, I, but that's another, another thing I've been really enjoying botanicals and not just of the herbal variety. Uh, but I mean like planting gardening, I've been enjoying yeah. that, like, and, and working on that stuff, but you find different varieties. Uh, of, of just that it's, a, it's an evergreen. It's in the evergreen category, but mm -hmm. see, this is, this is where we dive. Like I would dive into with the reaping stuff. I would dive into genus species and see what genus this is in. Like <laughs> who, who are the family members in this, yeah. in this, uh, in this club. But uh, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole, but okay. So you're, you're thinking more along those lines. Cause I'm thinking how high <laughs> I'm thinking about this, like 15 foot white, you know, PVC fence that goes all the way down your yard and back. But I would, my neighbor, I, see my I feel like the natural way would be the best way to do that. It'd probably be a little bit cheaper too. Fences are freaking expensive. Brother, it's really windy where we are too. So my neighbor has that 10 foot high white vinyl fence you're talking about and i've seen yeah. it repaired twice in the year and a half i've lived here it's because we get these big wind gusts and then you know so we're like well we don't want to do that chain link fence is kind of like it's not bad but we don't have a dog right now to keep in the chain link fence and really like kids are walking through our yard this was a lot until a year and a half ago so some kids will just still walk through from the bus stop and we're like hey i think i mentioned it in the last episode yeah you know? um so we want to kind of like create these barriers because not only that, but the neighbor's dog like runs into our yard and drops a deuce. And it's like, okay, how can we put boundaries out here and make it so that this is our place? So, you know, that's the project that I'm digging into right now, which I think is a project that you probably started 10 years ago. You yeah. know, when you first dove into owning a home, but I'm, this is new to me. So, so really that's something that has really helped me find like a new thing to focus on that isn't work. Uh, and isn't this dumb things happening here? Uh, I have really enjoyed going, like I got these alarms that are like, go water the lawn or tend to the garden, you know? And that's a really great, for me, place to start my day. Every day I wake up and I go out to the garden. And for me, that's like super peaceful. Gives me the control to like listen to some music and start my day on my own terms instead of what I would do and pick up my phone and go, mm, everything's terrible. All right, let's go, <laughs> you know? Uh, so that's been helpful for me. Uh, and I think, um, this year we grew, uh, cucumbers, which we pickled, which we ate, which were great, uh, cherry tomatoes, which my wife made, uh, into different pasta sauces. And we used all throughout the time. Uh, oh man, if you have not had French fries with rosemary and Parmesan, let me give you a life tip right now to do that. That is an unbelievable, like, that's my favorite thing that we have, uh, like that's come out of our garden is, is the, the use of the herbs, the basil, the rosemary, the thyme, the dill that we are growing. Um, I want to do potatoes next. I'm trying to get uh, asparagus. My wife likes asparagus. But that's like a two year thing. Do you know, do you know that asparagus mm -hmm. can't cut it for like a year? Cause it makes this bush. Right. But if, if that's where the sunlight comes in in the first, right, you got the bush and then the asparagus comes up the next year. It's a, it's a lot. I could be wrong on that. And if you're a, if you're a botanist or a gardener or whatever, like, Hit us in the comments down below. I'm an aspiring <laughs> rookie, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, uh, a novice gardener um, who's kind of enjoying that. Wife and I are talking about putting a greenhouse out back, you know, because we had something that pooped in our zucchini plant. And we don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah so that, 
<laughs> yeah, excuse me. I'm still getting over a bit of a sickness a couple, it feels like months ago now, but every time I take a deep breath and cough or laugh uh, hysterically, that happens. So pardon, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's where I've been focusing. And I feel like that has done me um, a lot of good. And plus my wife uh, has seen the benefits in like, you know, the kale and the other things that I've been growing out in the garden. Um, I probably spent way too much money to get $10 worth of kale or something <laughs> like that. Right. But you know, next year it'll, it'll pay off a lot more. Um, that's something that I've been enjoying. And I had a small piece of it while we lived in Chicago. I started a small garden while we were there. I don't know how or where I got the idea, but I'm finding, I'm finding peace in it now later in life. So, um, I've been enjoying that. I'm going yeah. for walks with my wife and stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. We just aerated our lawn. So what up? Did you? That's, that's good stuff. Aeration uh, and overseeding time of the that, year. I need to do that. Yeah, I need to do that. I just put out the uh, the crabgrass preventer. Welcome to the lawn care portion of the podcast. <laughs> um, uh, I need to also buy a till, like a little little uh, thing to till. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing, and and what Remy's been doing. Some stuff that makes that that we enjoy, and that maybe we never really uh, got a chance to talk about on the air that much because when you're on the air on the radio stations, we were with the demographic. You know, they're going, you know, the person you're talking to is, is a female and already there you're like, well, I, now I know you don't care about my grass. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about aerating my lawn. Maybe you do. No. Maybe there are some people who do. Um, but, you know, we're going to focus on the other topics. So we didn't get a lot of time while we while we found ways to work ourselves into some of the topics. We didn't spend all the time in the world talking about really the things that we enjoy. So thank you for asking. Like, I appreciate that. Um. I'm looking through other questions that we had for the Ask Me Anything episode regarding squishy tacos. Was that actually a mistaken order or did you intentionally buy squishy tacos as a marketing ploy? Um, and I remember on the air, we talked about how you were in charge of this effort, getting our logo on uh, some items that we wanted to. Baseballs, I think is what we ended up. We, Makes squishy sense. baseballs. We wanted we wanted squishy, tactile, like you know, fidgety kind of mm -hmm. uh, tchotchke for us to give out, and we were like, "Oh, baseballs!" Because it's a baseball town, and you know, this will be great, and it's our return, and we'll have something to give out whenever we're out and about, right? Mm -hmm. This was all on the air. We were talking about it. We put Remy in charge of it and in classic Remy fashion. No, <laughs> um, no, I think. I think we knew what we were doing in this, right? Like, I don't oh, remember. Yeah. I don't remember if squishy taco, like if squishy tacos were cheaper than baseballs or if when you go baseball, St. Louis, that makes sense. But hold on. Let's not take the first guess. Let's not mm -hmm. just go the easy route. Let's do something different. Yep. And I think that was the mindset we were in, right? That's exactly what happened. Yeah, we were at, I believe this happened at Margarita Night, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, hell yeah. That makes sense. Um, I feel like most of, of most of our good ideas are, we're, we're at least two for two or three for three on Margarita Night ideas. Um, <laughs> but that this was on our return to St. Louis and we had decided, okay, well, what, what's a fun little thing we can do? And yeah, it was, it started with the tchotchke idea with our logo on it. And then I don't know if it was you or I that said, but it would be so funny. And maybe we were just like searching through promo items or something. And we're like, oh, these tacos are sweet. Uh, maybe we make a storyline out of this. And that's where that happens. So, yeah, that was all that was all set up on the air for sure. But I think, uh, <laughs> I think it, it went over OK. Uh, people definitely asked, asked about it and we definitely gave a bunch out. Mm -hmm. But I think the grand plan for that <laughs> I numbered all of the tacos uh, because I thought it'd be fun if you hung on to them. If we had these ongoing promotional contests where, you know, we we draw from the from the taco pool, and if we drew your number, you'd win tickets to you know whatever show or something, and that could be like it, those were the Mason and Remy super fans. Like you had a taco, you were a super fan. You had a taco and kept the taco, and you won a prize. Super super fan. And that's how you kind of identify that core audience of people that really uh, dig the show. So there was always uh, a, it was a, it was not a, an original idea, but I know a lot of shows on the radio would do listener numbers. Uh, and like when they start a show, you get the first caller and you go, you're listener number one. And then you make a deal like every listener that calls and wins something gets a listener number. And whether you give them a card or you give them, you know, something to indicate what that is, in this case, a squishy taco, they would then, you would hope that they would call and go, hey, it's me, Janet, 
Squishy Taco number 342. You know what I mean? And you'd always be like, hey, yeah, one of the OGs or something like that. You know, so, so it's part of a longer term building plan of trying to, you know, build your community in that uh, to, to pull back the curtain on what we were going for with all of that. Right. Like yeah. a lot of those things happen. I do have a free idea for anybody that's still in the game. Let's go. That uh, that wants to take this idea that we almost we got so close to it happening. And I don't know if you remember this, but the coin pusher in the studio. Do you remember? Yes. That? Yeah. yeah, we did so, get close. We you actually knew a guy that was gonna like give us an old coin push machine. Yeah, wasn't that was gonna happen, right? My uh, my wife and I we actually had a claw machine at our wedding. Because whenever we were at said Mexican restaurant, I think we need to go back to this Mexican restaurant and just like brainstorm. Um, but whenever we were there, there's always there was a claw machine in the back and you'd always get, you know, drunk college kids or families coming up and playing the claw machine. <laughs> kids wouldn't stop nagging their parents or whatever the case may be. And everybody's eyes would be on that claw machine. And the second someone got something, the whole place would erupt in applause. In conjunction with that, just the just the suspense of will they get something right around the time when we had come back on the air in St. Louis in like 2018, 2019, a, a video trend that I had been fed on TikTok was, or on Instagram was these coin pusher uh, videos or claw machine videos where you just sit there and you just scroll through like people winning or not winning <laughs> prizes at an arcade. And I don't know why, but it was very, uh, mesmerizing to me and I was like how can we do something with this in the studio so I had this idea similar to the taco idea but we have a coin pusher that is in the studio and every day after the show if you called in you won a prize you'd get, you'd get like five coins and mm -hmm. each one of those coins would have a number on it they go in the machine and every day when the when coins would fall off those numbers would be entered into a larger raffle for a trip to Jamaica or a car or you know whatever the whatever the big prize would be. But that was the like, vision. Yeah, that yeah. was the vision. But you get like <laughs> a you get like a door prize or something. Maybe maybe concert tickets are going to a weekly drawing. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was something that we could post almost daily that would be interesting for people to watch and have their numbers out like a raffle. Mm -hmm. um, and and also we would get free content out of that on a daily basis and we had a coin pusher and apparently whether this is true or not it broke in transit and mm -hmm. we were unable to find anybody else who would give us one for free or for trade so um if you are an enterprising person and um want that free idea i think it's a home run and i think it's free content and you can yep. take it yeah. Yeah. And it would work. Like, I think we, I remember us talking about going on Facebook live after the show and doing that, those kind of things, right? Like you do a little live stream after your live show and then you, you bring everybody there and go, all right, now let's give away this stuff. And that, and I could see some people going gambling, you know what I mean? But also like, you shut up. No, um, it'd, be, it'd be tokens. Like you'd, you'd get of course. cool logoed tokens and they'd have, you'd, you know, write Sharpie numbers on the back or yeah. whatever. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, no, and we could put hundred dollar bills in there, and if the hundred dollar bill came off with your number, you get the hundred dollar bill. How about that? Right, like a brilliant <laughs> idea. I don't know why those guys didn't want to fund that <laughs> hundred dollar bills. <laughs> We're like, we will give away a car, we'll give away all this stuff, and and we take it to them, and they go, that sounds great. No one's gonna sell that. Uh, <laughs> just, just I don't know if that's because they didn't think that they could sell it, or that they didn't think it was worth the investment of people to actually get behind whatever that was. No, it's um, too much work for the promotions director. Oh, and we we know how the promotions director was. So <laughs> trying not to react. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's let's talk about a few other things. Uh, there were some questions uh, that we are still following up on. And again, if you have them, please hit us up. You can find our, our socials are on the in the you know comments of this. Do I do this? Yeah, down there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Kristen asked a question, and I think this is, might be where we spend the rest of this episode uh save for the outro uh, because these are questions that hit me and i went okay this is we might be able to help some folks here um she said uh, i'd be down to hear about other povs of life after radio we've kind of done a little bit of that here how we've taken our skills and translated them into something else uh we can kind of start there because that really everything that we did on our show we are still kind of doing in different aspects right like we were we're entertainers, we were content creators, we were podcasters, we were uh, making YouTube videos and really 
I think Remy, that's kind of, you're doing a lot of that still, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I've, uh, the people that I've talked to that have also been released from their contracts or let go or whatever. Um, I've, I've said that, you know, verbatim, every skill that I've, that I developed in radio is a skill that has transferred. So video creation, podcast, audio production, and social media, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's basically my job in a nutshell. Plus, you know, you get all those, uh, I don't know if you'd call them soft skills, but like the people skills, the, the communicating with clients, the knowing what to say to sell the product, um, you know, those kinds of things also help too. And I think that one of the main, one of the main positives, uh, that I get a lot is, um, you're so easy to approach and easy to communicate with. And I think that that is something that a lot of radio people just will naturally have. So those items can easily be transferred into whatever that next gig is. And I don't think that what I'm doing is any exception to what, what any business, if they have a budget to hire somebody to do those three things, um, like if you, if you're in a small business and they can pay you enough so that you can survive and, and thrive, uh, I think every business should should have a social media slash content creator now on their staff. And if they don't, that needs to be hired out by, you know, you, maybe you become an agency or something like that. But yeah, all of those, all of the skills aside from just creating a daily show, I think is the only one that I don't really do anymore, but I'm totally capable of. So oh, we do weekly uh, show now. The weekly show, yeah, we do. It's a <laughs> lot less prepared stress. for fifteen minutes before we did it, <laughs> and and which is arguable to say we did less previously. Still, like you know what I mean. <laughs> At some point, um, but yeah, I think uh, I think you nailed uh, that. A lot of the skills transfer. Public speaking being one that I never really thought that I was into. I definitely was a shy kid. I'm still a shy adult. I would much rather like just fly under the radar then step up and go, here's what I think about everything. Because I have said what I've thought about everything for 25 years mm -hmm. and I'm kind of done it. I'm d and I know what comes with it. So um, de-escalation of opinions, right? Um, I work on a video game now and I get a lot of rage about our video game and where I can equate it to, you know what you guys should play? Mm. The number of times that I had to be a music director where I have no control over the music we play is like, yeah, I hear you, brother. I'll let them know. You know what I mean? You become a couple customer service representative. You know, you become a de-escalation specialist. You know what I mean? You, mm -hmm. you become a, a, a kind of like you said, those soft skills are there in, a, in an unprofessional manner. And for me, when I transitioned into the video game world, I realized I had all these skills that I didn't, I looked at differently. Being able to speak in a meeting in a productive and professional way to me is like no problem. You know what I mean? But for some people, it's, it's hard. It's hard to hold back their opinions. It's hard to, uh, you know, verbalize words. It's hard to speak into a microphone. It's hard to look at a camera. But like, I think for us, we had no problem doing that, presenting, entertaining, emceeing. I'll always remember when you and I did the, uh, I think it was like a next top model at Illinois State University. You remember that? Yeah. You were the MC and I was a judge and we had a very Ryan Seacrest, Simon Cowell thing going on. And I think that was one of the first times I remember like me and this guy got something like that. Mm -hmm. We, that we can work off of each other. Cause you, you kind of have to be a natural, natural entertainer and able to fly by, you know, the heat of the moment, the seat of your pants, whatever you want to say to be able to improv in that moment and go, all right, everybody's looking at me. So I'm going to say something. <laughs> I hope it was funny mm -hmm. uh, and, and not be afraid to move on to the next thing. So where I would do this uh, four or five hours a day, each day, I now look forward to when I host a meeting to be able to flex this muscle. You know what I mean? I'm not intimidated by that. Uh, never did I think I would travel to Spain and speak to my peers about the projects I've been working on. In a pro I assembled a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I am not that guy. And you know, it's funny. I was interviewing for a job recently and I was like, oh, I'm not so organized. I'm more of a vibes guy. And I, I'm pretty sure I heard the door close <laughs> at that moment. Uh, but I realize now that that has served me in a way, right? Like I can feel when a conversation needs something or a, an audience is lacking something. So now I scratch that itch in those moments. Uh, it was my turn to host a meeting last week. And I remember going, oh, 
I nailed it. I didn't, but I felt really good about it. The notes afterwards let me know the real stance. But mm -hmm. a lot of those soft skills transition, and uh, more than anything, if I can say to someone working in radio and thinking about going elsewhere with it, everything you're feeling every day doesn't happen outside of that business. There are better companies. There are better businesses. There are better industries. There are better people treating people better. It's not the same. Like he mentioned, boy, they really messed you up when all you want to do is like get breakfast and chat. Like not healthy, not normal, not okay. Uh, everything I had happened to me at radio has made me so much of a better worker that we shine brighter than anybody these days, especially don't get me started on the generations of people who don't want to work. Just kidding. But for me, someone who is such a workaholic and day in, day out, this job didn't end. Guys with work ethic like mine rise to the top in a world of workers who don't. Mm -hmm. And it's in a new generation of people who are, you know, doing the least to get the most. Um, there are people like me who care about the products we put out, who care about their presentation, who care about like what they're doing in their work, who can't just clock out at five o'clock and call it good. You know, whether that's a detriment or not, that might be. Sometimes it is. Uh, sometimes I care too much and I get very emotional about that stuff. Um, and I, I recently said I kind of had to back off the leadership stuff. I was on a path to being a manager and I kind of had to take a step back because I was like stressed out and going, taking it way too personally when it's not even me. But like personally, I feel that if I am overseeing this thing, it's on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I felt that with you. And you know what that feels like now. I don't want to live in that world. So I said, I'm going to take a step back. And that for me was a moment where I was like, wow, normally I would have just kept pressing and failed. Uh, but I'm in a part of my life now where I can see, mm, maybe I don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but all the skills and everything that I learned during my time in radio um, and all the mistakes I made are definitely helping me be a better person on the backside. So um, I don't think there's anything that you have done in radio that won't be utilized outside of radio unless you choose to not speak after radio. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. If you I, can, go ahead. Um, I I was gonna say I feel like the path out if that is something you desire is to work on whatever you're super passionate about outside of the hours of your radio show and life where you can and make sure that you have finances in place before you pull the trigger and walk away from it. <laughs> and I think that that transition is a lot smoother and you'll find that, uh, I don't know. I just, it, I, I don't really miss much of it. <laughs> like it, it's not something that I think about uh, going back to ever um, on this, on this level. Yes. But on a terrestrial radio music station, it's just like, it just feels so out of touch. It just feels so just like the people have been telling you for years what they want. And you're just like, nah, it's fine. It's okay. Like we're not going to change anything. Um, I had a, I had a point and I totally forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> but, um, about, uh, like soft skills and things like that. And, uh, um, learning, but, uh, keep, keep talking and maybe, uh, maybe it'll come back to me. No problem, buddy. Uh, I have been there and I know it like literally, I think it happened to me in this episode and thank you for the edits. Um, the, the, the skills that you can transfer into everything else are, um, so, so much on a different level than just, I'm, I'm writing a, a word document or putting together a Google spreadsheet. Like that's, that's tertiary stuff. But I noticed some people that that is like their whole world. Like I have a coworker who knows codes for spreadsheets and I'm like, what is this voodoo? How are you doing this? You know what I mean? And it's very simple. Like I understand it's very logical, but I have no idea how to do it. And there'll be those people who have specialties and maybe you are going to be that person who is a good salesperson because basically what we did on the air was sell people on events. Holy cow, this concert's going to be so great, you guys. Oh my gosh. Look at this shoe. Holy cow, you guys, this shoe is out of control. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're all just salespeople. And, and that's going to help you. You know what I mean? It's going to help you sell yourself into a new job. It's going to help you sell whatever product you're representing. It's going to help you be the vocal. Um, uh, like I think at a time uh, when I was moving back here to normal, uh, Rivian was looking for a media contact. And I was like, oh yeah, 
I could do that. You know what I mean? Uh, I didn't get that job. I don't think I even interviewed for it. Uh, but it's fine. Like I, I, I submitted and you think like, hey, I could do these kind of things. And I think I did, you know, and the soft skills in between there would have been like, what are you writing up? What are you releasing? What do I have to say? You know what I mean? Like it's much easier. And even, and it's so much when you stop, this is kind of, uh, um, what's the word? Uh, it it kind of is damaging if you are someone who is like me and is like, I'm hedging my bets on me. Uh, it is so much less stressful to stop doing that and go to work for a company. Mm-hmm. And instead of every day worrying about you and what you are doing, actually just executing something for someone else who's responsible for it, like, whew, I'm not on the grill today. That is a nice feeling. Uh, having a team that works around you to make sure that the bigger picture is met and it's not just on my or Remy's shoulders to execute this plan, um, that feels good. You will find peace in the less ego business world of people actually working together to benefit each other. Because while a radio station staff comes together, they're not really a team. You have a bunch of individual egos who care only about their own stuff first and then, oh yeah, we all work for the same person. Yeah. Gosh, that was, that was the, the, uh, that to me had never be- become more evident than the last than the last station where like we're throwing we're we're fundraising for veterans and we have people on our staff that do not want to support that effort it just blew my mind like how how can we be on more islands on this same station and same team it just blew my mind um but uh yeah i i i feel like it to go back to the communication part of that where um in in my line of work there are a lot of very very smart people and i feel like that's probably the same for you a lot of coders a lot of uh a lot of introverted science people um and i think where i've always drawn inspiration from when i was probably 9 10 11 years old was bill nye the science guy and that guy has always come back up in my life and i i don't care what you feel politically i don't care about any of that at the very basic level that man bridged the gap between science and regular everyday people right so he's taking huge big concepts and then making them digestible and entertaining for people for kids Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like that is my role with reef builders is I am not a scientist. I'm not a researcher. Um, I may feel like I'm a little bit more advanced than the normal person when it comes to like coral reefs and things like that. But you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, <laughs> there are some science people in this business. And so taking that information and distilling it down to the average hobbyist who just wants a tank in their house because they want a piece of the ocean in the tank. They don't really yeah. care that it's a, a, a sarco fight and they don't care about uh, clownfish. They call them Nemo. They call them Dory. You know, the, those are the, that's what we're dealing with here. So I've always, I've always thought that I could do a good job with being a, li- a liaison between science and, and hobbyist. And uh, I think that that's probably something that, um, a lot of radio people can transfer over because if you're not already, you should probably be in that side hustle or at least thinking about what that side hustle is going to be because it's probably going to be your next career. <laughs> it's, you know, it just is. <laughs> you're not wrong. I remember thinking, uh, and this, you said something a little bit ago that took me back to what I remember being the fun of radio when I was younger, when I was a single guy. When me and my boss and a couple of the other radio guys would sit in the office till well after our show was over and just laugh about whatever something was happening, we would come up with the greatest promotional ideas or the greatest stunts or the greatest on air bits when we would just sit and laugh and talk and and figure it out. And we all got along together. But that's not what you have anymore. That's what we were talking about, the different egos and all the little the silos that people live in, you know. Uh, to get everybody together for a staff meeting is always an inopportune time for somebody because whoever's on later isn't in early. Whoever's in early isn't in later. And then everybody gets together. Nobody's happy. This guy's <laughs> tired. This guy just woke up. This guy's hung over. You know what I mean? Like, it's just such a mess of individuals that once it's done, you can take a step back and be less uh, pressured. 
Um, and, and I think that's where I, I mean, it's funny. I'm in a similar situation and where I work in video games between those coder logic introvert guys and the player uh, introverted guys, but like, you know, they, 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 sh- they speak different languages. I've always said, I, 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 since taking the job, I said, I translate nerds to nerds. Mm-hmm. I have the game nerds who are going, mm, my thing isn't working. And then I have to go to the spreadsheet nerds and go, this thing isn't working and here's why. And then they have to go, well, here's the intent. And I go, oh, the thing isn't working and here's why. You know what I mean? So we're both in this liaison kind of thing. My first yeah. job in video games was as a community manager. And when I thought about it, what we did was manage a community of people who listen to a radio station. We were in charge of the social media. We would send out notifications about all of our big uh, promotions and giveaways and reasons you should listen to our show and those kind of things. So it's all like these skills we're talking about that translate to other things. You may not know you have them, but trust me that you have way more skill than any other average worker out there. If you're in radio right now, you have been pressured to be less, less than coal and now you're a diamond. So like, let's just, let's just go on that take yeah. that into the next level yeah um, and, and, and while you're in it i remember thinking and even me with a college education you know i was like oh i'll be fine i got a college i got a degree i'm fine and you still fall into the trap of thinking that radio is all you can do and if you're in it right now and you're having second thoughts about it you're probably still saying to yourself this is all i can do i don't know how any of this could transfer over and here's Mason and I telling you that most of it will and does to some degree, it just looks different, right? Um, So trust yourself in that. And oh, I remember what my advice was. I've told many people who are still in radio that have kind of reached out during this. I've told them to continue to take the money (laughs) that they'll pay you until they're not going to pay you anymore or until you find what's next. That's the the best advice I think I can give anybody that's in it right now that's like, I don't know what to do. I talked to this one guy in Chicago on my podcast when I had started the Fearlessly Create podcast. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Um, Anthony Ponce. Do you remember his? Uh, he's a reporter. I do remember uh, his name, yeah. Yeah. So he was a reporter at, I forget which, which news station in... Um, in Chicago. And I caught him at a very, it was a, it was a crossroads for him. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he wasn't sure if he wanted to continue doing news anymore because like anybody in broadcast, it's it, as we've displayed over these last 10 episodes that, uh, it can get daunting. So he did this thing where he said 18 months of Anthe, which is basically his short form of, uh, I'm taking 18 months. I'm going to drill down on what I actually want my life to be. And I'm going to pursue whatever it comes out on the back end of this after 18 months. I don't know if maybe that was the like end of his contract or whatever, Something. if it was just an arbitrary number. Non-compete um, where he can start working again in this. Yeah. State. But I mean, you could go, you could mm-hmm. go eight months, you could go six months, but, but I think that there's some value in determining a length of time and Alabama did this right the year of Bama Mm -hmm. Um, it was in it was in a different context because she was probably more so thinking about content for the show and things that she could try and do and you know all that kind of stuff but if you uh if you really drill down and give yourself a timeline on who am I what do I want to do what does my ideal life look like and I know this is all this all feels kind of woo woo but it works Mm -hmm. and it's real and uh, I think he left broadcast but I think he got back in so you know yeah. maybe maybe you find that that radio is your true passion and nobody's faulting you for that so correct me if i'm wrong was he the guy who started the podcast driving lift yeah yep, yeah that was him so so he was a tv reporter and then he started driving lift and just that journalistic thing is in him and i love that i absolutely love that as somebody uh who commented i'm just now remembering this too uh was was an older gentleman who had done radio before us um, who had commented a bit about how back in the day, he, and I enjoyed this too. He said, I used to like when a storm came through because people came to the radio and you were there to help people. And I always remember having that in my head from when I started in radio into like, I want to be here when the shit goes down. 
And uh, the biggest thing I can say right now is I remember when Michael Jackson died, I was on the air. When the pandemic happened, I got a note that said I needed to come to work and what do Corona vlogs. Mm. I think radio is not as relied upon as much as it was. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you remember working in radio Bloomington when, when RC would come in and take over all the stations and we would simulcast and he would track the tornado. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen anymore. Now I just got Chuck over at the station talking about thunder boomers for two hours. It showed me where it's, where it's at. And that's fine. Like I, TV still has that. And I think that's great. Mm -hmm. And a shout out to Chuck for an epic run uh, on the I television. Love, I, I, I love storms too, because I love going to, you know, the local stations and seeing these meteorologists in their, like the heat of the battle. Like th That's, this is, this it's, it's true passion. You can finally see that these guys, this is why they went to school for yes. four years to learn storms, right? Well, that's, that's the main event for them, right? They're like, let's yeah. go. This is why I know county and street names. This, like, that is the most local and really the only opportunity they have left at this point. Because when I watch yeah. local news, they're just sharing viral stories and, and standing in front of a green screen. Sometimes I want to go, what are you doing? Hire me. Hire me. But I also don't want to do that because I know that yeah. they're probably also going, what are we doing? Hire yeah. him. The, uh, the the it's still it still blows my mind that radio stations here still in the morning do traffic updates mm -hmm. and weather updates like all you got to all you have to do now is type in your destination on your iphone and it will tell you how long it's going to take you to get there and if there are any any traffic bumps along the way yeah i don't need you to half-ass a, a traffic report now and and miss something because it was on Twitter 30 minutes ago and now it's cleared. Like it just doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to them because it's sold to some company who bought advertisement for doesn't whatever know what reason on a traffic report. Like, yeah. Yeah. why are you doing that to yourself? I will never forget working in St. Louis and having someone in Chicago read the St. Louis traffic. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yep. happening. And then why? But yeah, you're right. Because someone sold the sponsorship. Is that sponsorship paying for all of those people? Oh, no. But like they're doing traffic for 14 different stations in mm -hmm. five different markets at this point. So like a shout out to everybody who really worked hard to get to know all the streets and all the, the local things so that you can speak to them and become an expert in that. Uh, sorry that your job is being outsourced to somebody who has a phone at this mm -hmm. point. It's, mm -hmm. it's sad to say, but that's, that's the level of innovation we're talking about in the business right now. Yeah. Or lack thereof, I should say. And I do hate to say that I was on the road to Michigan or into, into Chicago a couple of weeks ago and we were listening to it. And I was like, if you're not an extreme local, you have no idea what this lady just said. Mm -hmm. Eden's 45, Dan, Brian, Brave, you know what I mean? Like they're reading through all these things. And I'm like, if you were just traveling, you have no idea what she said. Zero. No Zero. clue. Uh, it's, it's it's so it's it's not digestible for even the 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 most seasoned of chicago or st yeah. louis drivers like yep. it's just not like okay what mile marker does this start at where, where does the traffic start where can i detour like none of that happens anymore for anybody probably because we rely on our phones for so much yeah. anymore like i my wife and i were having this conversation in the car like how many phone numbers do you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do I still going, know my home phone number from when I'm a kid, but not yeah. my important ones? Yeah, I'm going back to like all of my friends' numbers when I'm a kid and knowing all of, you know, all of those digits. But I, I couldn't tell you anybody outside of my family's like I, I can guess at my parents at this point, but we rely so heavily on all these other devices and things to tell us information. Hmm. And that's just one small portion of why radio is is failing, especially music radio. Man, I get I it. Like I get it on a on like a, a talk station. That makes sense to me for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. It's an information channel, so that makes sense. But on like, you know, coming out of a Morgan Wallen track, like eh, okay. <laughs> it's sunny today it's gonna be a high of 86 into commercials. Okay. <laughs> it's it, it 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 equates with make sure you do a time check, time and yeah. temp twice an hour, like uh all right, there's my time and temp check. I just did it. It's it's literally 83 degrees. Yeah. I can see that here now. Like, I don't need that. But radio's just not interested in advancement because this is the advancement of radio. <laughs> it's moving away from radio. Mm -hmm. um, so to get to some more of Kristen's question, which is it's probably something that you and I will both be passionate about. Um, 
We've talked about the skills in translating them. She also said, I'd like to know more about your creative process creating videos. I want to do content and I feel like I have so many ideas, but it's ultimately just me. I don't have enough time nor energy to, uh, uh, at the end to, you know, do this immense to-do list. Um, yup. Mm -hmm. It is just you. And it is going to take your time and effort in order to do it. That is the hardest part of all of it. Because then when you're successful, they're going to want you to still do that. <laughs> That's the hard part. And, and, and when you talk about people failing upward, like you go, how come we're succeeding and going downward and not getting help and being like pushed and squeezed to do all this stuff when guy who can't do it gets all the help in the world? Uh, it's, it's, it's wild. Um, but the creative process, and tell me if I'm wrong, Remy, we've been through it a lot. I would tell you first, if you have an idea, latch onto it and don't let go till it's done. Because if you mm -hmm. wait even a day on it, it's going to lose some of that whatever. It's going to become an old joke to you and you're not going to look at it the same. So you got to follow that creative moment um, more so than anything. To me, that has been something that I think I remember you and I working a lot with where if we have an idea and we walk away from it, that idea is dead. Mm -hmm. It's hard to come back to those ideas. Um, and we had a lot of them. I think that for our creative process, you have to commit. If you think something is funny once, remember that as if everyone will always see it for the first time that way. I remember personally going, this isn't funny anymore. But the first time it was. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's what matters. So when we sat down and put all the clown makeup on for Marv and Randy, <laughs> it could have gone badly. But we committed and we were like, no, this is good. So first off, commit to it, have faith in what you believed was entertaining, creative, or whatever was the original idea, because it will still be that when we get to, when you get to the moment of bringing it to someone, presenting it to someone, make art, do it, whether it fails or not, you did it, which is more mm -hmm. than 95% of the people who will comment on it, rub that. Rub that around for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody who's got comments on anything, what have you made? Show me yours. Oh yeah. We've shown you so much. Yeah. I think, uh, I, and I'm, I'm, I might have paraphrased this before, but I don't know what book it was. Maybe big magic or I don't know, some self-help book that I was listening to on audio book while in Chicago. Um, this famous poet who had said something like ideas are, Ideas come and go with the wind. And unless you take the time to harness the idea, it will just go on to somebody else. And it sounds so weird, but I, I had always asked country artists or just artists in general, like, how do you start a song? And they never had a good I like a, a good answer for me. Like, why isn't this a formula? Because it's not. It's not a formula. You will get you will get a title idea or you will get a thumbnail idea. Or you will you will hear Brian Williams say old school light bulbs and be like, I don't know why, but I'm feeling something with those words. Isolate, take, match to beat, make a song, whatever. It's going to come in so many different forms and fashions. And the only way to start the creative process is to feel inspired enough to write it down. And or what I found beneficial, whip out the notes app on your phone, type it in. Mm -hmm. Or even better take video of yourself this is so weird it's so weird to do this pop your phone in selfie mode and talk through the idea and you may find that talking through the idea it's a dumb idea eh, it's not good uh, oh yeah or you go back to it and you're like gosh that was that was something good i'm glad that i i recorded that because it will come and go very very quickly yep. very quickly and they talk about this whole idea of um of uh ideas um like if you do pass up on it she gives this whole example of she met with an author the author said i have this great idea for a very specific thing never actually did it and another friend came to her with almost the exact same idea very specific and it's just kind of interesting how that all works and we'll <laughs> that's getting into some deep shit right there some deep like spiritual kind of stuff but um as far as the creative process goes if i had to, to distill it i would say just act on whatever impulse you may have or idea that may come to you and start there 
Um, but to answer the time and energy part, I don't think that the human race is equipped <laughs> mentally for what is expected from from us from a content standpoint, from a video standpoint. I think I think we might have made a video, I don't know, maybe once or twice a month, maybe like a bigger one. We were always doing daily videos and stuff like that. But now if you're in any kind of social media job, if you're not posting two or three content items a day, you're behind. Yep. Or at least that's what they want you to believe. Sure. Yep. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, YouTube channels out there and I always go back to Mark Rober's channel and he takes these big ideas like, can an octopus get through this maze or figure out a problem solve enough to get to the food at the end of the maze? And that's a, an amazing video that probably costs close to a million dollars to shoot but he puts out one video a month. That's it. 12 videos a year. That's it. Nothing else. And they always do amazing, like millions and millions and millions of views. And so that's the whole quality over quantity concept, right? But there's only a few people that are, can do that. The whole mentality of just, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, when you take your friend out to go, take headshots or something and you shoot 900 images, but one of them is good. That's all you need. That's kind of the, the mentality of most content creators these days is just put it out there. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe the algorithm will like it and maybe you'll get millions <laughs> of views. Everybody's just throwing spaghetti. Yeah. 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 But, but like Mason said, if you do things that inspire you, that's when you're going to be most fulfilled. And I'm kind of coming to that crossroads right now in my job. Um, giving people what they want or doing what fuels me and knowing that other people will be fueled by that because I'm enthusiastic about it, I think is probably the direction to go in when you're making content. I've said this before, and I think you kind of alluded to it, but if you don't jump on it, it goes away. I have forgotten so many great ideas. Mm -hmm. So many great ideas that I know that just were, were like, this would be funny. And then we went back to work and like four years later, I was like, damn, should have done that. <laughs> yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But like, I think you and I wanted to do quality over quantity, but in a way we were starting to see that the meta is almost like quantity over quality. And so that same thing, they're just, let's go try and do all this. And you make mistakes along the way and you learn how to best get through that process. The number of very amazingly entertaining things that we laughed about, but never finished is endless. Uh, I'm looking at a document right now that's on a Google Drive that I know it used to take five minutes to open it on a computer because this list, this document was so huge with everything, all the ideas and all the things. Um, you got to pick and choose. And yeah, uh, follow your heart. That's the weirdest, like, I don't know, maybe it's too cliche to say, but when you were like, you know, pick one of those things and go after it, I, I did this and I was like, you got to go with what you feel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you feel it, commit to it and don't give up. You know what I mean? I'm sure that all those guys, whether he was singing chocolate rain or whatever, they all had that thought at one point and were like, I don't know if this is good. <laughs> they went through it anyway. They, yeah. The dude who was spinning around with his lightsaber, all those folks who just wanted to make something. I'm sure at one point, Logan Paul or the, the, uh, whoever all the, I could pick many controversial YouTube names. Mm -hmm. I only pick, I only pick Logan Paul right now because somehow he went from like, the suicide forest in Japan to like the WWE championship or whatever. Um, that's an arc. That's a story. You know what I mean? And I think that he doesn't, he doesn't shy away from his past and the things that he is and has become and is just embraces it and move forward. Sometimes you have to do that. Uh, sometimes it can be the people that you don't like to do that. Um, but I mean, he's going to the bank more than I'm going to the bank right now. So, so what can I say? You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of those moments that we passed by where we didn't think it was right or someone talked us out of it and we were still like, damn, wish we would have done that. Um, but maybe we still have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to look through the rest of the question here. Also slightly surprised that your company didn't claim the socials when you left, uh, citing that it was company property. Um, might be, might be uh, poking, the, poking the bear here, poking the lion here. Did you do anything to safeguard them? I think we created them before we started. Uh, with the company yeah. and that that way like if you start like say we sign a contract with NBC and then we we start and create 
NBC Mason and Remy or whatever, then that's mm-hmm. theirs. You know what I mean? Like I remember at one point they wanted us to put either the call letters or the station in our name, like uh, Mason and Remy, the whatever, or, or, or something like that. I worked at a station once where we were all, it was called pirate radio. And so they had us all go by pirate, whatever, pirate Mason, pirate Jeff, pirate Joe. And they wanted us to show up. Like we had a chat room where we would go in as pirate Mason. Yeah. And I would go on the air and say, I'm pirate Mason. <laughs> um, and so the, but there were people that knew me like that. Right. But like, did you want, if we had done that, then they, yes, they probably would have taken ownership. I remember things in the contracts and things where we fought back, where they wanted to use our social media. They wanted to be able to sell our social media. And we said, no, no, what? Yeah. Like we created that's literally got our real names attached to that stuff. You can't just sell that. That's yeah. ours. Yeah. I've been out, so, sorry. This real quick. Give a shout out to somebody like uh, Lux who was on the point who really like carved her own path on the social media side of things before anybody knew how to do it or sell it. She was in there doing that stuff. Cause she knew it. She spoke that language. Mm-hmm. She didn't let them do it. Uh, she was involved in it. That's, that's the right way to do it for a radio company to, or anybody to come in and say, we own your socials. That's just bad business Yeah, and like immorally wrong. I remember um, when it happened with us, uh, we were in St. Louis the first time. And I remember we were re-signing a contract and there was this brand new clause in there that said, you know, we own your social media handles and we pushed back so hard on that. Um, and for those that no, don't negotiate contracts, you should negotiate your contract. Yeah. Um, because those are things that that can be negotiated. Like like Mason said, we had we had our handles long before, I mean, the Mason and Remy handle probably started uh, sometime in the early days, pre any of those contracts happening. But like, right. I think Remy radio and Mason show were both ours well before yeah. any radio gigs with con with contracts that tried yeah. to steal that from us. So yeah, I was using Twitter on my own before we, you and I started actually working together on the show. So yeah, a lot of that stuff, it's real estate and that's, um, it's kind of how it's sold. When you think about it, if you're creating something like if you're going to create a podcast and call it a flimsy flammable farts you're going to go to the immediately search flimsy flammable farts to see if it's available can i get the dot com or do i need the dot org or or is the real estate there we did that yeah and uh to remy's detriment after i left it was all in my name uh so that's how that plays out like you know get get a hold of your real estate and own it so no one else can take it from you yep and I think if you, I think if you're going on and you're posing as like this is where I work still, and you, like that's a problem. Or if you're on, for some reason they like still allowed you access because they forgot. Like that's trespassing. That's illegal. Like you can't do any of that stuff. But <laughs> um, from from the videos that we've used, we're commenting on videos that we created. That is not against the law at all. Um, and then as far as like, like I said, any, any of the actual, you know, properties socially that, uh, that the radio stations owned, we don't have access to, and we don't use anymore. So, and I'm not trying to say that I'm on any radio stations at this point, like, don't want come to. Find me at, like reefbuilders.com, find me, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's where I'm at now. Had a boy, buddy. So, yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's good. That's, and, and that's tough too, because. Your social media, when we were doing it, wasn't what it is now, which is basically like everybody has a publicist. You want to say something, go to social media, publicly declare it. That's great. I don't think they knew what they were doing at the time when they were like, yeah, go ahead and take the the socials for the station. And we were like, really? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> you know, and we start tweeting from the station or whatever. And now we can like ship our stuff to the whole station and, uh, you know, the station's following and that kind of stuff. So that we were carving out what social media was at the time. I don't think anybody really knew what we were doing, um, but now it's standard and now it's formulaic, right? Yeah. And, and corporate controlled. They didn't even care to invest anything into it when we were doing it. And now it's so populated by corporate stuff that that's nothing else cuts through. Yeah. You have and, to and boost was, your own posts if you want to get them to cut through. Gosh, I remember spending my own money and your own money on boosting our posts on Facebook and stuff. Gosh, oh, I and think, it, and, and, and it was almost embarrassing 
to post up a video that we made on the radio station Facebook page or Instagram or YouTube channel or whatever, because it just instantly like it discredited it <laughs> you know like we never wanted to do that the only reason why there are any videos on any station facebook page are because they forced us to do that mm. um anyways i'll stop there. and and they would never get viewed if you didn't boost them because of the algorithm yeah. is like wait we can get money from this person let's hold back their post and then maybe they'll put some money into it like it's business too i get that but that's not the only time we did our own thing because we couldn't you know, we bought our own promotional items on the when we were in St. Louis, whether it's thank you cards or window clings. We paid for those stickers. We paid for those. When the Mason Remy in Alabama Foundation started, I owned the 501c3. I had the tax papers. When the company didn't have faith in their own employees to handle money, while we're trying to like, I think we had a, 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 a couple who was affected by a tornado that rolled through and we were like, let's go on the air and raise some money for this couple that just lost their house. And oh, we don't want to get involved. In blah, 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 blah. Like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. More ways to kneecap your talent and just like not lift them up, instead limit them and tell them, no, we can't do this. Why? Because you think I'm going to steal money from someone? No. I started a 501c3 at LegalZoom.com because <laughs> you can do that shit. You got to take it into your own hands. And that's where we're at. Like I realized after our run in radio that you can't rely on a company. If you want to be successful, do that stuff, invest that time, make that thing. You're going to have to do it on your own dime. That's investing in your career. Uh, I may have a box full of Mason and Remy. Thank you cards that I'll never, ever use again, but that's on us. You know what I mean? Or maybe we will. Maybe. Hmm. Is there a reason we kept station logos off of our own merchandise? Hmm. Perhaps we had foresight. Oh, that was a, that was a great one when we did the squishy tacos and intentionally left off the logo. Hell yeah, yeah, we're not stupid. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> if you're gonna say do it, we'll do it, and we will also screw you in the process. Uh, <laughs> but that's what you get for not helping. Um, and, and so we we made sure these things happened, and we are not foolish about those things. So protect yourself. Invest in yourself, do everything you can to make you look like a reason to be hired or a reason to invest in this talent. And that's what we were trying to do is saying, look how, look how far beyond just talking into a mic we go. Uh, I think that is super important, not only from a social standpoint, but to creativity standpoint and just on your own. Um, the rest of Kristen's message as we draw to the close of the episode here is please keep doing this. I've been watching each episode while cleaning the house each weekend, and it's really helpful for that. So uh, thankful that we can be the voice of your house cleaning uh, and appreciate you, Kristen, for not only listening, but you know, the whole way. Kristen has been uh, someone who I think was inspired by us. Now I feel like I'm doing weird stuff, but I think Kristen would agree that uh, she was a listener of the station that you and I started on. She worked on that station. She continues to be a creative person in radio. And I want to fuel that. I don't want to say don't do that. In, in, follow your heart. If you love it, do it. Uh, I just think that you should not limit yourself. Um, it's about time to wrap up this episode. We've been going for a little while. Um, there were a lot of other comments we want to get to. Um, I want to first say this podcast is powered by Margarita Night. Margarita Night. Tequila fueling crazy ideas for decades mm. centuries and also powered by good internet turn off the wi-fi get connected no seriously put the the, the thing in the <laughs> st stop buffering connect <laughs> your internet again i know you think wi-fi is good it's not good it's not good. um finally the friday party jam we asked a lot of people what you would like from us overwhelmingly that right like i get it we would, for more than a decade, take a week's news and put it to a song. And that's hard to do when you live in two different states uh, and you're doing this like as a once a week thing. However, I think we might be able to make something happen. But the project has initiated. We will try for you. Let's see what we can do here. For all uh, those that clean their house whilst listening to this, we will do something for you. That's right. But that, but that, you know, that, that is a Friday jam. Uh, so, so we have to put some thought into that. This is a very newsy time. I don't know if I want to sing about what's happening in the news. <laughs> no we dogs, will, cats, or pets were harmed. We will, we will, work, <laughs> we will work through uh, uh, what that is. Someone also said, uh, they said, don't tell me you can't do a Friday party jam. And I kind of went, I, I can't. 
I can't tell you that because we probably could, mm -hmm. but it's going to be different. So we'll work on that. They also mentioned the unprofessional news. <laughs> that one might be a little more hard, especially in this political climate. Why does it feel like 2010? It was so easy to make fun of the news. And right now I feel like if I said, Hey, the news was on half of our audience is gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's become it's, so divisive. It's become, it's become so polarizing, you know? And it's like, if you say, like, if, if I said that, that pet thing, now people it, are assuming so much about me. Mm -hmm. When I just think it's a ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> There's a lot of ridiculous things said in politics, for sure. No doubt from both sides. And I get that. I think we mentioned a little bit in our last episode, some politics, and it'll be interesting to see the reaction uh, to that. But these are the hot times. We're in a political year here in the, in the United States, and we're coming up on, uh, on an election season. Here's one thing you won't see here, at least not from us, political ads. Mm. YouTube might do it. I don't have control over that. I'm sorry. Don't blame us. We didn't do that. But I am thankful because i've already seen radio people getting the messages about the various political ads and i've seen them having to make a statement like hey guys you know we're just a radio station right like we're not yeah. supporting it it's literally illegal for us to say we can't uh thankfully we don't have to we don't have to have anything to do with that um if any political candidates would like to come on the podcast please reach out to someone else <laughs> <laughs> but because radio stations are so desperate at this point for money and it is a political year and every political year they so cash in they, they cash in on all these political ads because these campaigns have endless amounts of money they right? rely on it your typical car dealership has a budget campaigns mm -hmm. don't have budgets so they just oh. throw millions of dollars at every single media source they can possibly they can possibly think of yeah so we we had to deal with this and not to make this any longer but we had to deal with this when there was an anti-union thing going mm -hmm. on in missouri mm -hmm. uh the right to work stuff yep. was happening well, we were running ads on the station that were anti-union and so we were getting all of these messages like I can't believe you guys are anti-union blah 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 and it's like no this is a, a political pack that is paying money for these ads yeah. if the other side wants to buy those ads they can that's their right they can do that and we will put them on the air you can't have uh, you can't deny one right and give the other that's an fcc that's the law thing. yeah that's, that's the, law. the law that's the law also uh would like to note that was while we were on a union station. Yeah. <laughs> that is a union yeah. station broadcasting anti-union commercials yes, exactly. to let you know how illegal it would be to say no, right? <laughs> like they could have, and to be fair, if you're a union employee, probably should have, but laws. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Uh, but not here. Uh, at least not what in this part that we upload. I don't know what happens outside of that. We don't have any control over that. Totally could have, but this could have started with, I'm somebody and I endorse this message. And then I come on and go, pull up, politics suck, no politics here. And then it's over and it's like, I'm somebody else and I also endorse this message. <laughs> I, but, but we don't get a say in that. We just get to say what we say between the start and the end. And I appreciate you being here for it. I think this is where we'll leave this one. Um, Remy, appreciate it. Always great to chat with you again. Maybe we'll do it again next week. Likewise, sounds good. All right, bud. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.